Hi guys, welcome to another mountain bike rear suspension episode and today we'll learn a quick and easy way to perfectly adjust our rebound speed damping considering our weight and type of riding. I decided to make this video because I noticed that many people out there have a completely wrong uh, rebound adjustment in their bikes. Some of, the, some of them have a very uh, slow rebound uh, setting, so an uh, over damped situation and many of them have a very quick and fast rebound damping, so an uh, under damping situation. And in this video we will learn how to properly achieve a rebound damping near the critical damping and how does this affect your ride stability, the traction and pedaling performance. Mountain bike rear shocks have a wide range of rebound adjustment. They can go from a very slow position to a very fast position. This happens because the shock has to deal with a, large, with a big difference in the rider weight. Typically a shock has like 10, 15, or some of them have 20 clicks of adjustability from the very slow position to the very fast position. However, and accordingly to Fox Racing shocks, only three clicks are the correct uh, range for each person. So considering this large adjustability, how do you determine where is your three clicks uh, usable range in this scale? So to determine this uh, and as a good starting point, we will perform the curve test or the curve method, which is an easy way and a, st a good starting way to achieve our perfect uh, rebound damping. To perform the curve test, you first have to find the curve, obviously, in preference a big curve, okay, a tall curve, and a flat, flat ground. You have to ride the curve at a walking speed, so very slow speed, and you have to drop the curve while seated on the bike, so you cannot lift your ass uh, off the saddle. You have to remain seated during the wall test, and also you cannot apply the brakes during the test because that will change the final results. So with this method you have to achieve the fastest rebound speed as possible without having oscillations. What I mean with this? So this is your shock fully extended. This is your shock with you seated on the bike. So this is your second position. You have to go down the, the curve so the bike will uh, compress the shock after the, the dropping the curve and then it will uh, rebound the shock. So the shock has to rebound as fast as possible to the sack position without oscillating. Okay? So if your rebound is very fast, the bike will compress and then will extend uh, after the, the sack position and will oscillate again two or three times. That's an under dumping situation. When you have the critical dumping situation, your rebound returns as fast as possible to the sack position without creating further oscillations. That's your critical dumping. An over dumping situation is, is when your rebound uh, um, returns to the sack position but at a very slow uh, speed. So you don't have oscillations but it takes a long time to, to the shock to returns to the set position. So the message is fast rebound as possible without creating oscillations in the curve test. So let's see how to do this. Estás a filmar? Uma, duas, três, quatro. Tá. Ok. Tá. Ok. 
quick. So as you learned in this test, you will determine exactly the, the setting for the critical damping of, of the ribbon. So remember uh, what I said before that you have only three clicks of usable range. Okay? So the critical damping setting is the slowest, slowest position of these three clicks. You can, there is no advantage to go slower from the critical damping. Okay? You can increase and the rebound speed from the critical damping like one or two clicks I do not recommend uh, more than two clicks from the critical damping because you will lose uh, some stability A fast rebound creates oscillations, unnecessary oscillations so for each bump the rebound has two or three compression cycles that means, for instance, that when you are uh, going pedaling acceleration, you create obviously the pedal bob. But if you have a very fast rebound, each pedal bob that you create, the rebound will amplify these oscillations. So, with the correct rebound, you still have pedal bob, but the chassis of the bike is much stable. And you can test that very easily. You can put your rebound damping at the fastest position and go climbing and go do pedaling and do some accelerations and we will see that the bike will bob a lot, a lot more than with the, with the perfectly tuned uh, rebound so that's, that's the effect of the rebound in pedaling so the rebound also affects the stability and traction when you go with fast rebound dampings an under damping situation where you have oscillation you increase the traction I mean you increase the contact of the tire with the ground because the tire is always planted on the ground but we will create unnecessary oscillations in the chassis and in, in the in the rider so you will decrease the stability in that three peaks range that I show you I do not recommend to go uh, two clicks more than two clicks from the critical damping situation because if you go faster than that okay you will gain some uh, traction the bike will feel will feel much livelier and plusher but you have le much less stability so the jumps jump takeoffs and the jumps landings will be, will feel sketchy and you will lose control both in the takeoffs and in the landings and you can go over the bars in extreme situations so it's a trade-off you, you can go two, two clicks uh, faster than your critical dumping but I do not recommend more than that because you might gain some traction but you lose stabi stability and there is no point to gain traction and lose stability because the stability is most, much more important than traction Okay, so to summarize this, from your wide range of adjustability in the rebound, you only have three usable clicks. To determine the beginning, the slowest usable uh, click, you have to perform the curb method, the curb test, which will, which will give you the critical damping um, adjustment. Okay, so no oscillations from this point. Now, if you are a cross-country rider or enduro rider, you, you want to, to decrease the pedal bob and the, the oscillation, so probably this is your best spot for you. If you ride in a very rocky and bumpy trails, probably you can increase one or two clicks. For downhill riders in tracks with a lot of bumps, 
probably I would suggest to increase one click or even two clicks. More than that, uh, you can gain some traction, but you will start to lose stability on jumps and landings and uh, when the situations are complicated and gets rough, you need stability and you start to losing that stability. That's it, that was my opinion, I hope you liked the video and please if you have some comments to do or uh, questions please ask in the comments that uh, I will like you to, to discuss these things with you. So stay tuned guys, hope you like this video and see you next time, bye!